Mr. Mark Che, please take both your cuts together. Sir, so um, in December 2022, the government took over the management of the Singapore Sports Hub under a new entity, Kalang Live Sports Management. I would be the first to state that as a tenant of Kalang Wave Mall, there have been visible improvements in some areas. But overall, I feel that there is change in the vibrancy and energy of the precinct. Not too long ago, the sports hub felt like a ghost town, unless Jay Chow was, uh, was performing. Today, programs are organized for participants of all interests every day of the week. The public can access sports and fitness classes, rent equipment, and use the world-class facilities to pursue their sporting ambitions. The events calendar looks vibrant, and many community events, local and international sports competitions and concerts are planned in the coming months. CASM is already delivering on its promise to, of more opportunities for locals to compete in and use its facilities. Just last month, MOE announced that the National School Games track and field finals will return to the National Stadium, and it's been four years since that has happened. With so much optimism and potential linked with the Sports Hub and CASM, I would like to raise the following points. One, many of the facilities are used by NSAs for national team trainings. The anticipated increase in events of the sports hub will inevitably disrupt national training and national teams could potentially be displaced for several days if the facility is used for an event. Therefore, it would be good to enable more communication between NSA, Sports SG, CASM and event promoters to identify critical dates when national training should be protected, for instance, the period right before national games or competition. Two, I would like to encourage the event organizers to, as far as possible, organize events after office hours or on the weekends for the very simple reason of making it easy for parents who are the children's biggest fans to, to watch their kids compete and perform. It will go a long way in growing Singapore's sporting culture. Three, Sir, I spend a lot of time at Sports SG. I mean Sports, um, I mean sports Hub. I also spend a lot of time at Sports SG. Um, an observation I would like to share is that people enjoy going to the Sports Hub because it's a lovely open venue to play. However, I feel that Chasm can better beat its chest and let people know uh, what is available. For example, how many members know that they can rent a kayak from the Water Sports Centre or go tubing on the lazy river at Splash and Surf? I believe CASM can and should do more to promote the ease of use of its facilities and it should explore collaboration with private vendors to increase the reach to the public. Instead of trying to deliver all programs, I would encourage CASM to work with existing tenants and NSAs to provide community programs. So my second cut. As an NSA president, access to facilities and development and high, uh, access for development and high performance programs is always at the forefront of my considerations. Therefore, I am encouraged by recent announcements of new sporting projects such as Pongo Recreation Sports Centre and Topayo Integrated Development that are part of the Singapore Sports Facilities Master Plan. First, I would like to ask MCCY to provide an update on sports facilities plan for upgrading as part of the master plan. Second, as our, facility, uh, our society matures, can MCCY share how it plans to make facilities accessible for PWDs and the elderly? And third, can MCCY share its plans to collaborate with NSAs to use the facilities for training and competition during off-peak hours? 